All right, guys, in today's video, I want to give you a complete beginner's guide to using the Pixel 7 phone. So I have the Pixel 7 Pro here with me. And if you recently picked up a Pixel 7 phone and you just want a quick tour on how to use it, or you just want to learn a little bit more about the basics, this video is for you. So let's get started because there is a lot to cover and let's start things off by going over the physical tour. Now let's start on the back of the phone. So on our back, we have our three camera array. So we have our wide camera, our ultra wide, and our telephoto lens right here. And this telephoto lens is exclusive to the Pixel 7 Pro. We don't actually get that on the regular Pixel 7. That is just one of the perks of getting the 7 Pro. So if you want that telephoto lens, you're gonna have to pick yourself up a 7 Pro. Also on the back next to the cameras, we have the flash right here. And the back of this phone is made out of glass. So just like last year, it is a full glass design. Now I'm the type of person who usually doesn't use a case because I really like how phones look without a case they're a lot more slim they look really sleek but with a phone like this because it's made entirely out of glass it's very slippery and fragile so i 100 percent recommend getting a case for your phone because it's one slip away from just being completely shattered i've been using the spigen case on my old pixel 6 pro i absolutely love this case it's one of my favorites i always pick up these spigen cases they've never let me down and i really like this little kickstand they have for when you're watching videos you can kind of put it up right like that really cool case if you want to check it out i'll leave a link in the description below now moving on with the physical tour on the pixel 7 on the right side of our phone we have the power button right here so this is what you use to lock and unlock your phone and just below that we have the volume rocker so to adjust the volume or the ring volume on your phone that's what you would use and then on the bottom we have our usb type c port with the dual speakers on the side of that on the left side of our phone, we have our SIM tray right there. So whenever you're ready to transfer your SIM from your old phone into your new phone, you can use the SIM ejector tool that comes in the box to eject your SIM and then insert it into your new phone right there. Now moving on to the front of the phone, we have our selfie camera right there. Now this year we also have face unlock, so you can see the ring lit up, so it's trying to search for my face. So if I look at it, my phone unlocks. And of course, being the Pixel 7 Pro, this is a 6.7 inch display, whereas the regular Pixel 7 is a 6.3 inch display. So a little more size on the Pro model. Now, as far as cables and what you get with this phone inside the box, you get this USB type C to C cable. So this is what you'll use to plug your phone into your computer. If you wanna transfer any photos or data from your phone to your computer or vice versa, or if you want to transfer data from your old Pixel phone, you would just plug these phones into each other and transfer data that way. Again, I have a video in the description below going over that whole process. So go ahead and check it out. All right guys, so now let's move on a little bit more with the functionality of this phone. So like I said earlier on the side here, we have our power button, which is what you're going to use to lock and unlock your phone. Now it does also support haptics, so you can tap on your screen to wake it. And I wanna explain a little bit between the differences of all of these screens. So when you lock your phone, you see you have this black screen with just the time, the date, and the temperature on here. This is called the always on display. Then when you tap on your screen, or you hit that lock button, technically your phone is not yet unlocked, you're just on the lock screen. So this lock screen, you can see it kinda lights up, you see your wallpaper in the back, you get your notifications on here. If you have any notifications, they'll be right here. You have your time, your carrier information will be right there, but you're technically not actually in your phone. You still have to unlock it. So from here, you can use your fingerprint or your face ID to unlock your phone. So if we do that, you're gonna see that now we're presented with our home screen. And when you see all of your applications here, this is how you know you're actually in your phone. All right guys, so now that we're in our phone, the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is how to use swipe gestures. Now you might remember on older Android phones, we would have those soft buttons down here. And if you're somebody who is a little bit old school and you want those buttons back, you can actually enable them by going into your phone settings, scrolling down to system, going to gestures and then going into system navigation and enabling those three button navigations from here. And then you see they pop up here. But I highly recommend if you're not used to swipe gestures, you get to know them because once you get used to them, it's a much more natural and fluid way to use your phone. So I do suggest you get to know them. There is a tutorial that you can take through the phone, but I'm just gonna quickly show you everything that you guys are going to need to know. So to open up applications, pretty standard, you probably already know. All you need to do is tap on it and then to exit an application, just swipe up from the bottom and let it go and you can see the app disappears. Open up another application, swipe up, open up another application, swipe up, open up another application. Now what you can do is actually jump between these 
these apps quickly by going to this little bar down here and swiping on it. And then you can see that it takes you to all of the other apps running in the background. Now, what you can also do is view all of these apps running in the background by swiping up and just holding for a second. So you see how I did that, just swipe from the bottom and hold for a sec. And it brings up this new screen that'll actually show you all of the apps you have running in the background. And you can also enter them by just tapping on them. But if you want to completely exit these apps, all you need to do is just take it and swipe up from here and you can see it disappears. If you want to exit all apps at once, just scroll to the end and you'll see it says clear all here. Tap on that and now if you go back into here, you can see there's no recent items because all those apps that were running in the background, we just closed them. Now, if you swipe down on your screen, you'll bring up your notifications. So anytime you get a text message, phone call or any notifications, they'll all show up here. You can tap on them to go into the application or you can swipe to remove them. So if I just swipe, you can see that notification is gone. It says no notifications. And then up here we have our quick settings. So you can see we have four things up here. We can change our internet connection. We can connect or disconnect from Bluetooth devices. We can turn on our flashlight. We can swipe down again to get some extra features here and then to get these settings and power button here. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. If you swipe up on your screen, it's going to bring up your app drawer. And this is where all the rest of your apps live. And if you want to add any of them to your actual home screen what you can do is just tap on it and then drag it up and it will add it to your home screen if you then want to remove them just tap on them again swipe up and then drag them into this remove button here and it'll remove it from your home screen but of course it is still going to be here you can also create app folders so if you have maybe a lot of social media apps like instagram youtube facebook you can group them all together by just holding the icon and then dragging it on top of the other one. You can see it creates a folder with both of those apps in there. If you want to take it out again, just hold it and drag it out. And that's pretty much everything there is to gestures. So you can kind of just swipe around your phone, tap on icons, hold them, drag things around. Pretty simple stuff, but I definitely suggest you guys familiarize yourself with swipe gestures if you're still using those buttons down here, because it is a much better way to use your phone and just a lot more intuitive. All right, guys, so now I want to move on and talk about some of the core apps that come with the phone. So you see down here, there are some applications in here by default. So you have your uh, phone application, which you'll use to make phone calls. You have your messaging application to send messages. You have your browser, which is Google Chrome. Obviously, this is a Google phone. You can install other ones, but this is the one that comes with the phone. And you have your camera application. So if you go into here, you can take photos by hitting this circle here. If you want to take video, just go to video and start recording. There's also all these different modes for video. There's definitely a lot to go over here, but I'm not going to be able to cover it in this video. But essentially, this is your photo app. Then you have YouTube and of course, all the rest of your apps down here. Now, if you want to download more applications, onto your phone what you need to do is go into your app drawer find your google play store and go in here and this is pretty much where all the applications that you can download on your phone will live so you can go around and just you know look around for whatever games you want or whatever applications you like or you can go up here and start searching for whatever app you want so if you want some kind of fitness app just type fitness click search and then see what shows up. You can go into any of these apps and then you see how many downloads there are. You can install the app by hitting install and that will install it to your phone. So if we actually do that right now, you can see it starts uh, the install. So we'll just give it a few minutes. All right, so now it's done. You can see we can open it or uninstall it. And if we go back to our home page, you can see it pops up right there. Now, if we want to uninstall it again, what we do is hold it, drag it, and you can see this uninstall pops up here uninstall it, hit OK, and there you go. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about these settings on the phone. So if we swipe down on our screen, you can see we have these quick settings up here. If you swipe down again, you can see we have a few more options here. So we have more quick settings. We have the Android version that we're on, and we have the settings gear icon here for the rest of our phone settings, and then the power button here that we'll talk about in just a moment. So these are all here just for convenience. You can, of course, find all the same things by going into the settings by hitting on this cogwheel, but you know it's a lot more work to actually search for all of those. It's a lot more convenient to just be able to quickly access them from here. So if you want to put your phone into airplane mode, you can just tap on that. If you want to take it off, tap on it again, battery saver mode, and all these other quick settings here. Now you can of course customize these and I highly suggest you guys do by tapping on this pencil icon. And then what you can do is tap and hold and drag these around to change the order. If you also scroll down here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of other options that aren't even included in the quick settings, but you can actually tap and drag these uh, up here and then they'll be available to you through your quick settings just like that. 
So I highly suggest you guys go through here and just figure out which features are really important to you and just drag them around and organize them so that they're in a really convenient order for you here, depending on how you'll use them. So go ahead and just organize these to your liking. Now, if you wanna see all the rest of the settings, you can hit on this gear icon here and this will take you into your phone settings. And I know this is really overwhelming, but this is pretty much everything that you're gonna need in order to um, customize your phone or make any kind of adjustments. I do suggest you go through these to just familiarize yourself with where everything is. But if you know what you're searching for, you can actually use this search settings up here and you can start typing if you know what you're searching for. So if you want to maybe adjust something with the lock screen, what you can do is just start typing lock screen and you can see your phone just starts filtering through all the settings and it'll show you up here that, you know, lock screen is under the display setting. It'll flash it and you can go into here and start customizing your lock screen. And there are a lot of settings that I would recommend you guys go through and change just for a better experience of your phone. But there's too much to go through in this video, but I will link a video in the description below where I go through some of the first things you should always change on your new device. So go ahead and check out that video if you want to know what settings I suggest you guys change. And before we move on, one last thing I want to talk about is this power icon right here. So if you tap on that, this will actually bring up your power cycle options so you can power off your phone, restart it, lock it down, or make an emergency phone call. And the reason I'm telling you that is because now when you hold the power button for a few seconds, it no longer brings up that power menu, which is what a lot of people are used to. Instead, it brings up your Google Assistant. So a lot of people don't actually know how to power cycle their phone. You would actually need to go and do it through here, or you can actually tap uh, the power button and the volume rocker up at the same time time to bring up that power menu. Now you can of course change the behavior of this power button to bring up the uh, power cycle options instead of Google Assistant. But for the sake of this video, I just wanted to show you how you can quickly power cycle your phone. All right guys, so that was a basic and really quick rundown of how to use your Pixel 7 device. But before I let you go, I wanna go through a few more tips that I think you guys will find useful. And I wanna quickly go through them right now. The first one is if you want to update your operating system, so your Android OS, what you would do is go into your phone settings, scroll down to system, and then go to system update. You can see I actually have an update available. So anytime Google pushes out an Android update and you want to update your phone, this is how you would do it. Next is if you wanna take a screenshot, all you need to do is tap on the power button and the volume down at the same time and your phone will take a screenshot. And the final tip I wanna give you is a quick way to launch your camera app without having to unlock your phone. So if you wanna quickly take a picture of something before it's gone, what you can actually do is instead of unlocking your phone, you can open the camera app directly from the lock screen by double tapping on the power button and you can see that the camera quickly opens up and you can start taking pictures right away. So you don't have to go through the whole unlocking process and then by the time you get your camera app opened up, whatever you're trying to take a picture of might be gone. You can just do it quickly directly from the lock screen like that. All right guys, so there you go. That is pretty much my quick tutorial on how to use the new Pixel 7 device. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for future videos to come, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.